Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Steve Kinney, I'm an engineer and a producer. And today we're talking about the five best UAD plugins for vocals. Now first, I wanna thank my subscribers and if you're new to the channel, please like, subscribe and comment. Let me know below what your favorite plugin is for vocals. I want to just say that it's taken me a while to get back to YouTube and upload another video because I'm in the middle of making an album. I've got 10 songs that I'm producing, performing on, and mixing and mastering. So it's been a ton of work, but nonetheless, we've got a ton of content this year that we're gonna be uploading, and I really appreciate your support. So thanks so much for watching. Let's get into the video. So when making this video, I wanted to make sure that I covered all of the signal chain and included at least one piece from that signal chain in one of the five choices that we're going with today. So the first part of the signal chain is gonna be your mic pre. Now, this whole video is not gonna be about different mic pre's and options for that. It's just gonna be about the best mic pre and then the best compressor, the best EQ, that kind of stuff. So we're gonna be breaking all that down. So let's talk about mic pre's. So my thought process on the mic pre kind of comes down to this. I've used Neve a whole lot uh, on voices and I've found that Neve mic pre's sound absolutely amazing in a lot of different ways. However, I don't think it's the most flexible choice for a mic pre or the most interesting choice. I've got two that are in mind right now. Now the first one is an awesome choice. We've got this UA610B. The UA610B is awesome for a couple reasons and I highly recommend this as your primary choice is because one, it's low in DSP. Two, it's an absolutely awesome sounding mic pre. And three, it comes with every Apollo. So you don't have to go out and buy this plugin, it just comes right with it. And that's awesome. So right out of the box, you use this thing, you're gonna get awesome sounds. I haven't had a bad sound come from it yet and I've used dynamic microphones, condenser microphones, tube condenser microphones. So definitely consider this one. Don't write it off just because it came with the device. This is a really nice preamp. Now that leads me to my number one choice. My first pick in the five best UAD plugins for vocals is gonna be the API Vision Channel Strip. Now the reason that I would choose this channel strip over everything else that UAD makes is for a couple reasons. One, of course, it sounds absolutely awesome. It's incredible sounding. But two, it has pretty much everything that you'd really want in a vocal chain all within this mic pre. So jumping into console here, you'll see that it has this gain, you know, your gain section, which is pretty cool. And it's modeled the gain section of the API really well. It sounds fantastic. And what I like to do is make sure that my signal is kind of hitting it pretty hard. That's going to make sure that we're hitting that sweet spot and that we're getting that kind of character from the API. Then of course, you've got your usual suspects. You've got your high pass and low pass, which is really useful when you're building a vocal chain. So that's awesome. But then it has this really awesome expander and gating tool. Now I've used this numerous times and I get absolutely awesome results. And what I do is I set the depth lower to somewhere around like three or six dB. And basically what this does is that when you stop singing, it'll pull the signal down so it's a lot quieter. So this is going back to one of the ways that as an engineer you can cleverly manipulate the room into sounding like a quieter room, you take advantage of that. Now I haven't seen that, uh, I haven't seen the gate on any other uh, mic pre. It's not on the SSL, uh, it's not on the Neves obviously. So this is a really flexible tool, super handy. And of course, you've also got an EQ section built in, just like all the other channel strips. But then you've also got this really fast, nice compressor. Um, and so something I like to do is I pair this, I, I make this all sound really good right here and then I'll just throw something like an LA-2A right in front of it. Now you've got this awesome sounding signal just like that. That brings me on to my second pick, which is actually the LA-2A. So now the LA-2A goes back years and years and sounds absolutely incredible and it's pretty iconic. I think it's used almost on every vocal out there. It's used on tons of different signals like guitars, it's used on basses, I mean you name it, this thing's been on it. 
Similarly to the UA610B, when you get your Apollo, you get the LA2A with it. Now it is the legacy edition. And if you don't know what the legacy editions are or the differences from them between the uh, LA2A uh, classic pack that UAD puts out, all legacy edition plugins, from what I understand, bypass the transformers that they've modeled. Uh, so if you get something like the LA2, which is like the original one, I've got it pulled up here. That plugin also models the transformers uh, in the circuit path, whereas the legacy edition does not. So that's gonna be your biggest difference. So if you want to take your signal one step further and make it that next step closer to the real LA2As or the LA2, pick up the pack, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be disappointed that you did. Okay, so moving on to number three. Now we're starting to get into some interesting territory because we could take this a couple different directions. We could go another compressor, uh, we could go with another EQ, but I think it's kind of time we start branching out because if we're following our signal chain so far, we've went with an API, which has that fast compressor. So that kind of eliminates the need to go with an 1176. Now, if you, um, cause it, Classic vocal chain is you use an 1176 and you use an LA-2A, you combine those two and you kind of get this really snappy, like pop vocal, which sounds really good. But you can achieve this similar effect with the API and something like an LA-2A. And you also get that gate that sounds really good if you use it the right way. You've got your EQ built into that. So already we have a really good signal chain built. So now we're gonna wanna start getting into some effects. Now this third pick is something that I think is very, very valuable and it's absolutely so easy to use and it sounds so good. It's a no brainer. The third pick is gonna be the suppressor. Now if you don't know what this is, this is a de -esser. Basically, all the de -esser does is think of it kind of similar to a compressor where it's just focus on a few select frequencies which is typically gonna be in that really high range where all the sibilance or the really like SE part comes from when a singer sings. This is going to have a huge impact on the voice and it's incredibly easy to use. All you do is you set your threshold and you move it to whichever frequency band that you want. And just like that, you can get an incredible result. Now you can dive in even further and you can get even more technical with this particular plugin, but even just right there is gonna have such a profound impact that your vocals are gonna sound that much better. Okay, so I feel like this is a good jumping off point. We've got a complete signal path built right now just for a dry vocal. This alone would sound really, really good. Of course, you'd wanna tailor the settings if you've been following the on-screen guide. I'm not using a signal to set this just you know, at this moment, but set them to your standards, find where they're working for you, and you're gonna have an incredible sound just off these. But we're kind of missing some next steps here. What about some effects? So one of the things that I like to do with effects is have a delay and also have like a reverb. And I'll use those kind of throughout the mix to get the effect that I want, get the depth and dimension that I want with the voice within the context of the mix. And we've got a lot of options here for reverbs, got a lot of options here for delays. So this is gonna be a difficult choice. First, I think it should be mentioned also that whenever I use an effect, if I'm doing it in console, I'm usually putting one of those effects on an aux bus. And if I'm doing it after the fact and I'm setting those effects up within Logic or within Luna, I'm also creating a secondary bus. I very, very rarely Will I ever put anything like that on the actual channel that I'm working with? So we're gonna jump over here into the aux channel. So what would I use for a delay? Now, in, in my library, you can see that I have the Galaxy Tape Echo. I've mentioned this on other videos. I love it. It's a strong, strong choice. But then we've also got the Korg 3000. I think that this sounds absolutely awesome for an actual delay, but it is only mono. So that kind of complicates things, but there's a way around that. I'm gonna show you how to use this in stereo. Basically, 
all you would do is you'd add an instance on one insert, you'd then you'd go back and add another instance on another insert, and so now you've got two, but you've, you've got to send it twice now. You've got to send it to aux one, you've got to send the vocal to aux two, and then you have to make sure that you pan them left, bring up the other one, pan it, pan it right. Now you've just set up a stereo delay, and the cool part is you can have them ping pong at different times, that's pretty fun to do, or you can just set them at the same, the same rate there. Now, I think because of that reason to not run it in stereo that way, I think for me that kind of eliminates it. I know if you're just starting out and you're just building your plugin library, the plugins are expensive and you want the most bang for your buck if you're just starting out. So, if I was to pick a delay, one really key thing to remember is that the precision delays that come with your Apollo sound awesome as well. They've got great modulation. You can do ping pong, it's stereo, it sounds awesome. Low overhead for DSP, always a good choice. But if you're looking to take that next step into something that has a lot more character and sound, my fourth pick, said it before, I'll say it again, Galaxy Tape Echo, amazing. Uh, if you don't know what this sounds like, Listen to Rolling in the Deep by Adele. Uh, this, is, this is what was on that. Now you, you do have a tape delay, and what I like to do is pan that delay a little bit to one side or the other, and then you've got a reverb in the center. So now you're gonna have this really cool spring reverb kind of thing, which is uh, kind of that old school sound, uh, but it's got a ton of character to it. It sounds amazing. So while this plugin has kind of accomplished two things, it's gotten our delay sound, it's gotten our reverb sound, it is pretty tied really tightly to one kind of tonal character. So what do I do if I don't want a spring reverb sound? We gotta choose a reverb plugin. So there's a few ways that I look at reverbs. Again though, our parameters are gonna be what is the most flexible plugin to use, uh, yet being still simple to use as well. So we've got something like Pure Plate. Uh, plate Reverb sounds amazing. Highly recommend this plugin regardless. But this one is another one trick pony. It's only gonna do this kind of sound. So we'll have to look at another one. Of course, the Tape Echo still comes up as a choice here, but I think really ultimately we're gonna end up back with one of my favorites. It always comes up, I always mention it. It's a Lexicon 224. Lexicon 224 is fantastic. It's got hall sounds, it's got plate sounds, it's got room sounds. It is in stereo and there is a secret weapon inside of this chain right here. It's this little depth knob. Now, one thing that I've used this depth knob for, it's really subtle and the best way to hear it is if you have really nice headphones on. But what it does is it basically kind of creates a three-dimensional forward and back effect. So you pull it forward and it starts to appear like your sound is closer to you. You push it back, it kind of starts to go like it's further back. So awesome tool to use for a reverb and it really creates depth, especially if you're using it on like a room effect. Um, I think that this plugin rules, absolutely rules. So these are my picks. Again, you've got the API Vision, the LA2A, Oppressor DSer, Galaxy Tape Echo, and Lexicon 224. If you've made it this far, you might like what I'm talking about on this video and on this channel. So all I'd ask is that you please subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment, interact with the channel somehow. It really helps me out. And if you wanna support the channel further, Check out my Console Classic Sessions Pack. It's available now. If you're new to tracking, it's the quickest way to get production ready sounds and learn how pros make their signal paths. Thanks again for watching guys. Stay tuned. I'm gonna have a lot more content coming out. As soon as I finish this album, this is gonna, the YouTube channel is gonna have a ton of content coming. So thanks again for watching guys. We'll see you soon.